Have you ever seen a black diamond? Black diamonds are rare, and for reasons you're about to find out, may be something you want to avoid. Especially this particular black diamond. The Orloff diamond has a dark long history that left its owners on a streak of bad lucks. This is the story of the Orloff diamond. Let's dive in. It's been said that the black diamond comes from a Hindu statue. They called it the Eye of Brahma. This 195 carat stone was pried out of the forehead of the statue by a monk, but it's unclear who the monk was. Some people have seen a mysterious monk inside the temple before the diamond vanished. The incident is said to have happened in 1747. But how did the monk get the idea to steal the diamond in the first place? The story goes that a French soldier by the name of Jean Baptiste Tavernier first spotted the diamond and became entrenched with it. He may have instructed the monk to steal the diamond, or he may have been the monk himself. Witness saw a mysterious monk in the temple, yet at a time when no one should have been inside that area of the temple. Witnesses didn't get a good look at the monk, so it could have been the French soldier. From there, Tavernier then sold the diamond to a British sea captain named Samuel Gregg. Gregg was the first person to bring the diamond into Europe. He tried to sell it but no one wanted it. It took multiple more attempts. He almost gave up. But eventually, he managed to track down a person willing to purchase the diamond, Count Grigory Grigorievich Orlov, a lover of Catherine the Great and a prominent statesman in Russia. Princess Nadezhda Orlova of Russia was one of the first official owners of the diamond. Soon after the diamond came into Princess Orlova's possession, news broke that she ended her own life. There was no reason given as to why she had taken her own life, but whispers on the street were that Princess Orlova ended her own life due to an unrequited love. Words of this being the reason for Princess Orlova's demise traveled to her family in the palace, which they vehemently denied. The story of Princess Orlova is thought to have been fiction for many years, as historians could not find any record of her that documented her existence. The only thing they had were the story, which they believed to be fictional. About 100 years later, a historian found evidence that Princess Orlova may have been a real person after all. She had descended from the Romanov family and married a man called Nikolai Orlov before moving to Europe where she lived to the ripe old age of 90. Historians are still debating whether these two princesses just shared the same name and lived at roughly the same time in history, or if they were indeed the same person. Some believe that the story of Princess Orlova's tragic end may have been made up to cover up the fact that she had moved to a foreign land. Two more Russian princesses, Leonila Galitsyn Baryatinsky and Maria Leshenskaya, owned the Black Diamond at some point, but they both experienced the same tragic fate, supposedly while wearing the diamond. All the Russian princesses knew the fate of their previous owners, but they still accepted it when given the diamond as a gift. The Orlov diamond is actually one of the largest diamonds in the world, weighing approximately 189 carats. It is sometimes referred to as the Orlov diamond or the Orlovsky diamond. Given its rarity, all the Russian princesses who had received the diamond may not have wanted to turn it down, even if it was tied to something so tragic. The diamond changed hands several times until in 1932, it was acquired by J.W. Paris who was a well-known gem dealer. He did not know who was selling the diamond, but that was irrelevant to him. Paris would sell the diamond to Charles S. Winston, but he took his life soon after. It's believed that he had been depressed about his business for some time before he decided to end it all. He left two letters behind, one to a jeweler and another to his wife. The content of the letters was never disclosed, and only those the letters were addressed to knew what was in there. Inside those letters was the true reason Paris did what he did. Other than that, we can only speculate on whether his business has something to do with it. Charles S. Winston did some research about the diamond and discovered that it was linked to a string of owners who took their own lives. Horrified, he decided he needed to do something to break the curse. Winston asked an Australian jeweler to cut the diamond. The Australian jeweler was reluctant to cut the diamond when requested in the beginning because he had never seen a black diamond of this size. It was a rare gemstone that he wanted to preserve as much as he could. 
That's when Winston revealed to the jeweler what the previous owners of the Orloff diamond all suffered from. The Australian jeweler exchanged a knowing look with Winston. He knew he had no choice. Winston was in fear for his life, and he had good reason to be. Superstitious or not, the diamond was not a lucky charm. The diamond was cut into three pieces. The largest piece was 67.5 carats. The other two parts of the diamond ended up being sold to other buyers, and there are no records of where they are now. In 2006, a diamond dealer by the name of Dennis Petamizas, from Pennsylvania, bought the diamond, and the process wasn't easy. He explained that he had seen the diamond in a store window 30 years before, in California, where he was pursuing a degree. He read all about the diamond whenever its name appeared in newspapers. One day, when he was at a colleague's house, he spotted the diamond on the desk. He couldn't believe his eyes. It had been a while since he last heard of the diamond, and there it was, right in front of him. He asked his colleague about the diamond, but unfortunately, the diamond did not belong to his colleague. Out of his own goodwill, the colleague contacted the owner of the Orloff diamond, and it took about six months of negotiating for the owner to finally decide to sell the diamond. Petamizas knew all about the bad luck associated with the Orloff diamond, but he didn't believe in the curse. So he wasn't worried. He did an extensive search on the history of the black diamond and discovered that there had not been any notorious deaths linked to the diamond in over half a century. This made him believe that the curse, if there was ever any, had been broken. Currently, the black Orloff diamond is now part of a 108 diamond brooch that's fixed in place from a necklace. The necklace can sometimes be seen at international gemstone exhibitions. So far, there have not been any more deaths associated with the diamond since Petamizas bought it, and its current owner is still Petamizas. You may be surprised to learn that the Orloff diamond was actually lost for a period of time in the late 18th century. During the French invasion of Russia, in 1812, the diamond was hidden in a mattress by the Russian treasury and was not rediscovered until 1819. The diamond has also been allegedly tied to the French Revolution. During the Revolution, the diamond was briefly owned by the Duke of Orleans, a member of the French royal family. You may wonder what happened to the monk and the French soldier who stole the Orloff diamond. It's unknown what became of them, because they were never formally prosecuted. But some thought that the diamond has placed a curse on them, therefore, they shouldn't have had a happy ending to their lives. But that's only guesswork. We do not have any slight clues of where they wind up later in life. It's possible that they lived a happy life having retired early, thanks to the diamond. There are only three places in the world where black diamonds are found, the Central African Republic, Brazil, and the Kozelsky volcano in Russia. Some scientists believe that all black diamonds arrived on Earth via a huge asteroid that hit Earth millions of years ago. Joseph Garay and Stephen Haggerty, scientists at Florida International University, published an article in 2006 that reportedly detailed the scientific reasons why black diamonds, unlike other types of diamonds on Earth, all have an extraterrestrial origin. Carbonados diamonds, also known as black diamonds, are consisted of titan and nitrogen in a ratio that only occurs in meteorites. Carbonados diamonds also contain some hydrogen, which is further proof that they were formed in space first, before landing on Earth. It's thought that when they first arrived on Earth, they were an asteroid about half a mile long in diameter. If you're not familiar with miles, that's about one kilometer across in diameter. The reason black diamonds appear black is because the hematite and graphite in them absorb light, while pure diamonds let the light pass through without absorbing it. The hue can also be attributed to radiation that was present during its formation millions of years ago. It's safe to touch black diamonds without worrying about the radiation, since it was only present when it was being formed. They are notoriously difficult to facet. It's easy to ruin a black diamond if the jeweler is not careful. The weight could become 90% less if an error is made. This is why only highly experienced jewelers are allowed to cut the diamond into shape. The Orloff diamond remained one of the most notorious and well-known gemstones in the world, and you should be able to see it at the Diamond Fund exhibition at the Kremlin in Moscow, 
Russia, if not for the war. Along with the Orlov Diamond, other well-known artifacts such as the Faberge eggs are also exhibited at the museum. And that concludes our video on the Orlov Diamond Curse. While the existence of the curse is still debated, there's no denying the fascinating history of this remarkable gemstone. As for whether the Orlov Diamond is cursed, that is debatable. Not everyone believes in that kind of stuff. While some are adamant that the diamond should not be messed with. Would you ever wear a piece of jewelry that has been tied to a string of deaths? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.